Okay, we are recording and let's get started with 7.3. So 7.3 talks about hypothesis testing for the mean when we don't have sigma. And sigma again stands for the, the population standard deviation. So what happens when we don't have um, the population standard deviation? And when we don't have the population standard deviation, we will know the sample standard deviation, okay? And so we're gonna use the sample standard deviation instead. And, um, and it says in many situations, the population standard deviation is not known and we have to use the sample standard deviation instead. And this is kind of similar to what we did in 6.2 using a T distribution and the idea of uh, N minus one was our kind of like our degrees of freedom. And so uh, the first part here are, how do we find the critical values for a T distribution? And so it says, we're gonna specify the levels of significance alpha, and then we're gonna decide whether the test is a left tail, right tail, or two tail test. And then we're gonna find the critical values using uh, the table and the degrees of freedom. And I'm gonna show you another way you can go about doing it also using, the, using our calculator, okay? And here we go. And okay, so it says right here, when a hypothesis test is left tail, we're gonna use the one tail alpha column with a negative sign. If it's right tail, we're gonna use the one tail alpha column with a positive sign. And if it's two tails, we're gonna use the two tails alpha, co alpha column with a negative and a positive sign. So <clears throat> I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. And here it says, um, Find the radical critical value, excuse me, T0 for a left tail test given that alpha is 0 0.05 and N is 21. Okay, so my alpha, this is gonna be a left tail test. So my alpha is gonna be the area under the curve to the left, and the area under the curve to the left in this case is 0 0.05. And if our N is 21, then my degrees of freedom is always going to be that number minus one. It's always going to be minus one. Whatever my n is minus one. So in this case, it's going to be 20. Okay. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this using the table, and then I'm going to show you how I can do this using my my calculator or my calculator app. Okay. And so using the table, and I'm going to pull up my table, and then I will tell you what I think I can do it. This. Uh, let me see. Let's Okay, so I think, here we go. Yes, you can see this too. Okay. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to use my table and we said our alpha was a 0 0.05. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right here to point, oops, alpha, okay, here's 0 0.05, one tail. And we said our degrees freedom was 20. So those are gonna match up right here at a 1.725 and if i come back to let's find my let's see where my problem was here we go okay so we came up with our critical value t0 to being something like 1.7 oh i already forgot what it was 1.725 something like that yeah 1.725 okay so 1.725, but if you notice up here, it says with a negative sign. So I'm gonna put a negative right here, okay? And so, and so what that value is, it's telling me the value here is negative 1.725. Now, if, if I wanna do this on my calculator, okay? So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do this on my calculator. So I'm gonna stop sharing this piece here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my calculator with you so that you can see what I'm going to do. Okay, so here's my calculator. Let me turn it on. 
Okay, excellent, good. Okay, so on my calculator, normally what I would do when I would go second in VARS right here, typically, and, and uh, Erica, are you using the calculator or are you using that app? Do you know? I mean, do you have the calculator or do you have that Graph and Calc 83 app like on your phone or on your iPad or something? Um, I have a TI-83 calculator. So you have one like what I'm using? Yes, that, but it's not the app, it's the actual calculator. The actual calculator. Okay, so so I'm going to recommend, um, okay, what kind of phone, do you have an iPhone, do you have an Android, what do you have? I have an iPhone. iPhone, perfect. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Um, and so what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop sharing this real quick, simply for the reason, Erica, that, um, let's see, simply for the reason that, uh, here we go that on the 83 which is what i have too on my on my computer and even if i had like the actual 83 which i do have um the 83 does not do this part here and then it becomes kind of a pain because you have to use the um the table all the time okay so what i'm doing here uh, let's see here we go i'm just getting my iphone i went to the from the beginning i'm going to go to the app store uh right here so i'm clicking on the app store and then right here in my search box i'm going to type in g-r-a-f the letter n and it's it's probably the first one that comes up it says like graph and calc 83 and if i click on that one let me see it's this it's this one right here. And mine says open because I already have it on my phone, but yours will probably just say get, and it's free, you don't have to pay for it. And, and so the reason why I want you to do this is this app works exactly like the same way, exactly the same way the TI-83 does, the TI-84 does. There's no difference in it. And the reason why I'm showing you that, and I'm glad that you're here because I can show you on my, I'm going to do it on my iPad just because my iPad is bigger than the phone. The phone gets kind of small and it's kind of hard to see. So let me do this. Here we go. Okay. So I'm going to do that same problem that we did right now, but I'm going to do it on my calculator and I'm going to, I'm going to show you the steps here. And so when you open it up again, this is looking really big because this is on my iPad instead of my phone. And um, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to hit second and then I'm going to hit the bars button. So I'm going to go second and bars, second and bars. Okay. So when I do that, I want you to notice, uh, I want to say it's number four. Number four says INVT. Okay. And the reason why I want to do it here is the 83 doesn't have it. Okay. And the, and the calculator app does. The 84 has it. 84 pluses have it. Just for whatever reason, the 83 doesn't. So I'm going to go to number four, and it's asking me, and it, you can kind of see it. It says something like uh, probability and then V. So the probability just means what was the area to the left? And we said the area to the left was something like, uh, I'm just going to show you, 0 0.05, and then I'm going to hit comma. And then the second number was our degrees freedom, which in this case was a number 20. So I'm going to hit 20. And then I'm just going to close off my parentheses, and I'm going to hit enter. And if you notice, we're still coming up. If we go to three, if we go to three decimal places, I'm coming up with negative 1.725, which was the answer that we had when we did the problem. Uh, let me see. Let me find my notes. Here we go. Which is what we came up when we did the problem using using our, um, our, our table, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write down the steps here so that you can see this. So right here, we're going to go second, bars. Oops. And then we're going to scroll down to the one that says inverse T. And there's going to be two numbers. And the, there's going to be a first number, and there's going to be a second number. 
So the first number is always going to be the area to the left. And the second number is going to be our degrees of, write it like this because I'm running out of room, the degrees of freedom. So in this case, we typed in 0 0.05, and then our degrees freedom was 20. And I came up with that number right there. And so um, you're probably going to want to use the app instead of the actual calculator. And it, again, it works exactly the same way. The steps are, are, are no different than what I'm doing when I'm using my calculator. It's just like I said, the 83, for whatever reason, does, doesn't have that inverse key. And you can type in a program, but it kind of takes a long time to do it. I think just using the app is a little bit easier. Okay, I already downloaded it. Okay, excellent. And so that I'll tell you. Does, sorry, that one doesn't work for desktops, right? No, I, I don't think it does. I don't think it does. But like if when you're taking, so basically like when you're taking your test, you can use your phone. You can use your phone as your calculator instead of having an actual calculator. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. So look, I'll tell you what. We're, you and I, we're gonna do we're gonna do problem two together. And we're going to follow the steps, and we're going to see if it works. We want to double check that I'm that you and I are coming up with the same answer. Okay. So this problem here says find a critical value t zero for a right tail test given that alpha is 0.10 and n is nine. So first thing you're telling me is that this is a right tail test. So since this is a right tail test, we're looking at the area to the right, and the area to the right is going to be 0.10. And the second thing is, since my n is 9, my degrees freedom is going to be 1 less, which is 8. Now, the one thing I want to emphasize is that whether I use my table or whether I use, like, that calculator or the calculator app, we're always concerned with the area to the left. Okay, so, excuse me, what that means is that if this area to the right is 0.10, Remember, the area under the entire curve is going to be 1. So the area here would be 0.90, okay? And so if we're going to do this using our, our calculator app, what we're going to type in, we're going to go second, then we're going to go vars, and we're going to scroll down to inverse t. And the first number always tells me the area to the left, right? And so we said the area to the left was a 0.90. And the second number here is always going to be my degrees freedom, which is 8. So I'm going to take my calculator app. And I'm going to go second in VARS. I'm going to scroll down to number 4, inverse T. And I'm going to type in 0.90. And then the comma, which is right above the number 7. And I'm going to type in the number 8. And I'm going to close my parentheses. And... Erica, you tell me if you're coming up with the same number. We're going to go to three decimal places. I am coming up with 1.39. There you go. You got it. <laughs> Perfect. Now, now, I want to show you something. This was us using the calculator, right? Now, we right. might say, what happens if I want to use the table, right? And the only reason I'm bringing this up is, like I said, when I've taught this class before, I've had people who are like, I just like using the table. So we can use the table if we want to. Okay, so if we're going to use the table, we said that our alpha was, uh, let me see, I'm trying to see if I can figure out what my alpha, oh, here we go. My alpha was a, um, let me see, one tail test. Yeah, we said we're going to go, oops, let me see, if I double check something real quick. There we go. Okay, when it's a right tail, we're going to use one tail alpha with a positive sign. All right, so let's do that. One tail alpha is 10, and my degrees freedom was 8, and you and I came up with 1.397, and so there it is, right? So, again, you have options on how you can do this, right? You get to choose... Do you want to use a table or do you want to use a calculator? You know, 
I, I, when I first was doing this, I was using the table every time, but then once I started using the calculator, I was like, this is super easy to use the calculator. Okay. All right. So now we're going to do one more like that. And then we're actually going to figure out how do we, how do we set these problems up? Okay. So now it says, uh, we're going to find critical values, negative T zero and positive T zero for a two tail test, given that alpha is 0.10 and N is 26. Okay. So it tells me here, when we're going to do two tail tests, but the first thing we got to do is we're going to take our alpha number, which is 0.10, and we're going to divide it by two, which is 0 0.05. So there's going to be two values because this is a two tail test. Okay. So this is 0 0.05, this is 0 0.05. Okay. And because in this problem, my n is 26, that just tells me that my degrees freedom is 25, okay? And so what we're going to do now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to stick with our calculator. We're going to go second bars, and we're going to go to inverse t. Now remember, the first number always tells me the area to the left. So the area to the left in this case is actually a 0 0.05 with my degrees freedom being the number 25. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to go second bars, inverse T, 0 0.05, comma, 25. And I'm coming up with this one here. There's going to be two values, and the first one is going to be a negative. So this should be a negative 1.708. And then this one here is going to be a positive 1.708. So once I find this one here, this one is the same thing, except it does not have it does not have the negative part. So I don't have to worry about, you know, once I find the first one, we know what the uh, what the second one is going to be. And and just to show you that if we were going to do this using our our table. We could do it the same way. What we're going to do now, though, is when we do it with a table, we're going to go to the two tail part, which is right here. So the two tails together, the alpha was 0.10, and we said our degrees freedom was 25. So there's the 1.708. One of them is positive, and again, the other one is negative, right? So again, you have options here. I just want you to be aware of both of them. Okay. So now we're going to actually figure out how we can do some of these problems and uh, um, let's see if we can figure this out. So it says the t-test for a mean mu. It says the t-test for a mean mu is a statistical test for a population mean. And the test statistic is the sample mean x bar. OK, so here's the little formula that we're going to use. And, okay, so the first part says we're going to verify that sigma is not known and the sample is random, the entire population is normally distributed, or n is bigger than or equal to 30. We're going to identify the claim mathematically and verbally. We're going to identify the null and alternative hypothesis. So we're going to find our HO and our HA. We're going to find our level of significance, our alpha. We're going to find our degrees freedom. We're going to use, we're going to find our critical values. Again, we can use the table or we can go with the inverse key, right? Uh, we're going to find our rejection regions. We're going to find our standardized test statistic using this formula right here. And then we're either going to make a decision to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis, okay? So again, one more time, let me kind of show you how we're going to do this part here. Um, so... The first problem here says, um, a used car dealer says the mean price of a two-year-old sedan is at least 20500 Okay, so we're talking about the mean, so I'm going to use new, and it says it's at least 20500 So I don't remember if I was doing this with y'all's class last week or my other class last week, but people, some people were kind of struggling with the idea of, of, the, of the term at least, okay? So if I said I want a new job and I want to make 
at least $100,000 a year, that means that I want to make $100,000 a year or more, right? So I don't want to take anything smaller than 100 grand. I want to make 100 grand. If you want to pay me 120, I'm cool with that. If you say we can offer you this job and it's only 90,000 a year, I'm not good with that, right? So the idea of at least means that number or more. So it says the mean price mu is at least 20,500. So this here is my claim. Okay? This is what they're claiming. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say, what's the opposite of saying something is bigger than or equal to 20,500? Well, the opposite would just say that it's smaller than 20,500. Now, the next part is this is going to be my null hypothesis. And the reason I know that is because we have that little equal to part. Not because it's a claim, but because it has the equal to part. If it has the equal to part, it's going to be my HO. So then the other one, the one without the equal to part is going to be my HA. Okay, so let's take a look here. We have found our HO and our H, excuse me, our HO and our HA. Now we want to identify our level of significance, our alpha. Okay, so in this case, we know that our alpha is 0 0.05, okay? And it says right here, uh, you find that a random sample of 14 similar vehicles. So my N in this case is 14, which tells me that my degrees freedom has to be 13. Okay. And out of those 14 vehicles, those 14 vehicles have a mean price of 19,850. So my X bar is going to be 19,850. And it says in a standard deviation of 1,084. Now, the one thing I want to emphasize here, when it mentioned standard deviation, the word that was not there was the word population. So this is understood to be a sample standard deviation of 1084. Okay, now the question is, is there enough evidence to reject the dealer's claim? Well, we'll figure that out in a second, okay? What we're going to do now, because we have found our alpha, we have identified our degrees freedom, um, we are going to do our our rejection regions next okay so what i mean by that is we're going to look at our ha when i look at my ha and i look at the direction of that inequality sign it's pointing to the left so this here is going to be a left tail test okay where alpha is at 0 0.05 and so we need to find our critical value we need to find that this number right here we need to find out what that number is going to be so what we're going to do we're going to use our calculator we're going to go second bars we're going to go ahead and go inverse t now my area to the left is a 0 0.05 and my degrees freedom is a 13 so I'm going to do that right here, too. Let me get my iPad going. Okay, so second bars, inverse T, 0 0.05, degrees freedom, we said was a 13. Enter that in. And I'm coming up, and I'm going to go to three decimal places, but I'm coming up with a negative 1.771. Because it's a 0, 0.9, so if I go to, go to three decimal places, negative 1.771. Okay. So we found our critical value. So remember, what this means here is this area over here, that's my rejection region. This is my fail to reject region, okay? So we found our rejection regions. We've done that part. Now we're going to go ahead and find our standardized test statistics. So this is the formula that I'm going to use. So I'm just going to down right here. So it says something like T equals X bar minus mu divided by S over the square root of N. And the only thing I'm going to do, I'm going to write this part in parentheses too, because I think when I'm doing this on my calculator, it's just kind of easier for me to do. So my X bar in this case is the 19,850. Uh, my mu was the 20,500. 
uh, let's see, our S was the 1084 divided by the square root of our N. Our N was the number 14. Okay. And then I'm going to show you this on my actual calculator um, because I want you to see that I'm going to type in on my calculator. I'm going to type this in exactly as I see it. So let me pull up my calculator for us. Here we go. And so let me clear all this. I don't need it. And let me see. All right. So we said we had parentheses, 19,850 minus 20,500. Close that off. Divided by, and I had parentheses again. And we had 1084. Oh, I wrote down 1085, but it's 1084. Uh, let me see, divided by the square root of 14, and I got to close all my parentheses, and I'm coming up with a negative 2.244, so negative 2.244, I'm going to write that down, and I'm going to come back and show you 244, okay, so let's stop sharing this one, and let's come back to this one go and I made a small mistake this is not 1085 this is 1084 so that's what we have right here okay so we found our our standardized test statistic right here to be negative 2.24 so what I want to do is I'm going to kind of come back to to this picture right here and I'm trying to see if I can get yeah all of this in the same picture so I want to find where would this number fall on my on my number line. So I know right here in the middle is zero. If this number here is at negative 1.771, then somewhere over here, use black or something, somewhere over here would be that number. And that number is falling into the rejection region. So what I'm going to say now. It's because we fell in the reject, rejection region, we are going to reject the null hypothesis, right? This is going to be the first thing we're going to do. Okay. Okay. We're going to reject the null hypothesis. Now, the second thing we're going to do is we need to figure out which one was our claim. So when I look right over here when I look right over here my claim happened to be my null hypothesis so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do and I'm going to stop sharing this because I got one more document that I need to share with us here we go okay so yes, you can see it now okay so What I'm doing here is I'm kind of thinking about this as a little chart that looks something like this. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, we said our claim was our no, and we fell in the rejection region. So what I'm going to say is there is enough evidence to reject the claim. So I'm just going to stop sharing this. I'm going to come back one more time to my notes. And we're going to say there is enough evidence to reject the claim. And that's pretty much all we really need to do for, for these types of problems. And so, um, one quick second, here we go. So one of the things that I want to do is just like we did last week where I pulled up a couple of homework problems and then we were able to kind of see, um, you know, how can, I, how, can I do, how can I do some of these problems and apply it like just like the example that we did right now. So I'm going to pull up my homework from 7.3 and let me see.
you know, try to find a problem that looks similar to what, here we go, to what we've been doing. So let me do this. Yeah, copy this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so this problem here, I want to say, I think you can see it. Let me double check. Yes. Okay, this problem here is number eight out of our homework. And, uh, and so what I want to do is I kind of want to walk us through this problem. This is the, only, the other ones are like the first couple are like those first three that we did. And then the next ones are the same types of problems, except there's not really too much wording. It's just a little more straightforward. This is the one that has like the most wording. So I want to kind of go through this one. And so um, it says a credit card company claims the mean credit card debt for individuals is greater than 4,900. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here when I'm reading this problem is I'm reading here the mean credit card debt is greater than 4900 so they're saying the mean is greater than 4900 this here happens to be my claim so the first thing we're going to figure out is what is the opposite of saying something is greater than 4900 saying that it's less than or equal to 4900 okay and then once we do that, we're going to identify our HO and our HA. So when I look at this one here and I see that has the equal to, that's my HO. So this one here is going to be my HA. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out, okay, which one of these should I choose? Should I choose A, B, C, D, E, F, right? So immediately I know that, like, that's not one of them that has an equal to only... This is not one of them because it has an equal to only. And so let's see, I'm looking for the HO to be greater, I'm sorry, the HA to be greater than 4,900. So HA is greater than 4,900, here we go. And for HO to be less than or equal to, and there we go. Okay, so my choice here is gonna be C. So to show you that I'm telling you the truth and I'm not just poking in the eyes here. I'm going to go ahead and go to my homework problem. And you said we're going to choose C. We're going to check our answer and we got it right. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and do the next part, which is finding the critical values. Okay. So we'll figure out how we're going to do that. I'm going to copy this again. And let me stop sharing this. And let me come back to my notes. And here we go. Okay. Okay, so now we want to find our critical values, okay? So the way we're going to do this is I'm going to go ahead and draw a little picture. My picture is going to look just something like this. Okay. And so let me come back and keep reading the problem. Uh, so let's see. It says we find that a sample of 30 credit card holders, okay, so my N is 30. I know that. Uh, has a mean credit card balance, so my X bar is going to be 5082, and a standard deviation of 600. Again, since it didn't say population, I have to assume that it's a sample standard deviation. And now it says, at alpha being a 0.10, uh, can we support the claim? So now, what we need to figure out, is this a left tail, right tail, or two tail test? And the way we always figure that out is by looking at the high. By looking at the HA, since the HA is pointing to the right, this is going to be a right-tailed test, okay, with my alpha being 0.10. So what that means is, let me draw my picture a little bit better, okay, that's good enough. So my alpha is the area over here, and that's 0.10. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to find our critical value, right? Now remember, the area underneath the entire curve is, is one. So this area is 0.10. That tells me that 
that area right there has to be 0.90. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to go second. And we're going to go vars. And we're going to go to the inverse key. And remember, we're going to have two numbers. And the first one is going to be the area, oops, the area to the left. And this one here is going to be my degrees freedom. So I know that my area to the left is the 0.90. So to find my degrees freedom, if I come back here, remember we said if, since n was 30, then my degrees freedom is going to be one less, 29. Okay. So let's do that on our calculator. So I'm going to grab my calculator real quick. And oh, where's my calculator? Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to go second bars and go to inverse T. And I'm going to type in 0.90 comma 29. Close it off. And the number that I'm coming up with here on my calculator was a 1.311. 1.311, and let's see. Yep, you got it, perfect. Same thing, Jelly Bean, we're getting this. Okay, so now look, let me, so right here I'm gonna put 1.311. Notice what it's telling me, it is telling me to go to three decimal places, that's why I'm putting it there. So look, we're gonna double check again to make sure that, that what we're doing here, uh, Erica, it really is coming out coming out the same thing. So like when you're doing your homework, you know that you're, you should be coming up with the same answers. So here we go. Here's my palm. I'm going to type in 1.311 and I'm going to go chickety check. Boom. And we got it. Right. So we know that we're on the right track here. Okay. Now it's telling me we're going to figure out, uh, it says determine the rejection regions and select the choice and all that kind of good stuff. So uh, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So let me stop sharing this. Let me come back to my notes. Okay. So when I'm looking at my at my graph, remember this part of the oops, this part of the graph right here is the rejection region, and then this part of the graph is our fail to reject region. So in comparison to this number right here. When T is bigger than 1.311, oops, put an extra one there. When T is bigger than 1.311, when it's bigger than going to the right, all of this, then we are falling in our rejection region, right? That's the region that comes to the rejection. So when T is bigger than that number. So when I come back and I look at my homework problem, and I say, okay, what are they asking me to do on this second part here? They're saying, okay, which one should we pick? And we said, oh, when T was bigger, right here, bigger than, and I'm going to type in 1.311. And again, I have to look at my picture in order for me to be able to figure that out. But that's why I'm looking at my picture. And then I say, check my answer. And okay, we're doing okay so far. And now part C says, we need to find our our standardized test statistic. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to place it into the, I'm going to come back and place it into my notes. So let's come back to our notes again. Here we go. Okay. So right here, and I'm going to go paste. Okay. Now we want to find our standardized test statistic. So this is the one where we have to use that, that formula. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it down. So the formula was x bar minus mu over s divided by the square root of n. Oh, come on. Come on. Okay. So now let's see if we can find some of these numbers. So let's see. I'm going to come back here. We had an X bar. Here we go. Here was my X bar. It was 580, So I'm going to write that right over here. 5082 minus my mu. Our mu was the 4900. 4900 divided by 
uh, S, S was the number 600, so 600 divided by the square root of N, and N happened to be 30. Oops. Like that. Okay, so again, I'm going to do this on my calculator so you can see exactly how I am typing this in. No. Okay. So let me turn on my calculator. Let me clear out my screen. Okay. And so I had parentheses 5082 minus 4900 divided by 600 divided by the square root of 30, close, close. Okay, and I'm coming up with 1.661. So I'm just going to write that down on my paper, 1.661. And let me stop sharing this here. And let me come back one more time to my problem. Okay, and it's actually just telling me to go to two decimal places, so I'm going to put 1.66. 1.66, and I'm going to check my answer, and we're doing great. Okay, now we need to figure out which region did we fall in, okay? So let me stop sharing this. Let me come back to my notes one more time. Okay, so we came up with 1.661, right? Okay, so remember, this, this number right here was 1.311, and we came up with 1.6. So the number that we came up with, the number that we got was actually a little bit further over here. This is at 1.66. So we actually fell in our rejection region, right? So I'm going to stop sharing this. I'm going to come back one more time to my problem. Okay, so here we go. So we fell in the rejection region. So we're either going to select B or we're going to select D. Now, if you look at B, it says reject it because we are in the rejection region. Yeah, that's actually true, right? D says reject it because we're not in the rejection region. No, we actually are. So we're going to select B. Okay. And now, now we just got to figure out how do I, which one of these do I choose from this point? So the last part I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here. Here we go. And let me see, let me place this one up here. Okay, so remember what our claim was in this case. In this case, our claim was the HA. And we were rejecting the null hypothesis. And my claim was our HA. So the reason I want to I want to know that is when I look, and I'm sorry, I'm kind of going back and forth a lot, but I'm going to come back to my little cheat sheet that I, that I put in the folder for you guys. So we said our claim in this case was our HA, and we were rejecting it. So we're going to say there is enough evidence to support the claim. So that's the sentence that I'm looking for. There is enough evidence to support the claim. So I'm going to stop sharing this, and I'm going to come back over here. Oops, that's not the one I wanted. There we go homework okay and we said there is enough evidence to support the claim so it says at 10 percent there is enough evidence to support the claim that the meaning okay so if you look at choice b at the 10 percent level of significance there is sufficient evidence or enough to support the claim that the mean credit card debt is that is greater than 4900 check it and we're done right so that's basically how I do these types of problems. So I really wanted to go through this one here, Erica, simply for the reason that I think this is this particular problem is probably the most challenging one that we have. Um, uh, this is the one that's probably the most challenging one that we have. But I'm, I wanted to point out that you know if we do piece at a time, we can kind of get through the question. Okay. So let me stop sharing this.
and let me see. And I'm looking at the time, and we kind of have to stop because I have another class that's starting just right now. But I hope that this part here made sense as we went through it. Um, you know, if you got any questions, just let me know, and I'll be more than happy to, to answer anything you got, okay? Oh, all right, awesome, great. So I'll go ahead and stop recording.